Bright and sunny morning, the Raggy Dolls were up in the treehouse, deep in discussion. It had all begun with Sad Sack asking a simple enough question. What is the time? Dotty had said that she thought it was about half past ten, but Sad Sack had other ideas. He wanted to know all about time itself, and how we got seconds and minutes and hours and all the rest of it. It's all to do with the planets, stammered Hi-Fi. Yeah, said back to front. It takes a year for the planet Earth to go around the sun and a month for the moon to go around the Earth and a whole day and a night for the Earth to spin around all by itself. Ooh, stop it, giggled Lucy. It makes me giddy just thinking about it. The Earth spins, said Sad Sack. Of course, said Dotty. The sun doesn't really rise or set. We are the ones that move. I don't understand, said Sad Sack. The whole world is turning, all the time, said Princess. That's how we get night and day. What they mean is, when it's midday for us, on the other side of the world, it's midnight for them, said Lucy, trying to be helpful. Who? said Sad Sack, very confused. Back to front, picked up an old tennis ball and quickly drew a cross on it. Look, he said, holding up the ball. See this cross? If you can imagine that this ball is the earth and this cross is where we are... Well, now, you can be the sun, shining your light on us. Sad Sack watched as Back to Front slowly turned the ball. Well, all the time you can see the cross, it's day. But when you can't, it's night time. No problem. Good, said Dotty. That settles it. Can we all go for a walk now? But Sad Sack still looked puzzled. Some time later, the Raggy Dolls were walking across the big field and Sad Sack was deeply troubled by thoughts of spinning planets. He suddenly stopped walking and instead jumped up and down very purposefully. What are you doing? inquired Mr Marmalade, suddenly appearing from nowhere. <gasps> I'm jumping up in the air for as long as I can, puffed Sad Sack, and he gave another jump. Whatever for? said the big ginger cat. Ever curious. It's just an idea, said Sad Sack, jumping as high as he could. In between jumps, he explained to Mr Marmalade that if the world was turning all the time, then he ought to be able to jump up and let the ground travel beneath him, thus saving him the trouble of walking. Hmm, it seems to me that walking requires a lot less effort. Meanwhile, Dotty and the others had come back to see what was going on. They laughed when they heard what Sad Sack had been trying to do. We've been discussing time, explained Dotty. Yeah, and how people started measuring it, added Back to Front. Yes, but I still don't understand how you get minutes and hours from days and nights, said Sad Sack. Ah, that's quite simple, said Mr Marmalade. As the earth turns, the sun appears to move, and it's very easy to measure. Following his instructions, the Raggy Doll soon found a stick and stuck it upright in the ground. Next, they placed a ring of stones around it. Well done, said Mr Marmalade. You have made a rudimentary sundial. Now all you have to do is watch the shadow of the stick and see how long it takes to touch the next stone. So that's what the time is, said Sad Sack. It's waiting for something to happen. Or finding out how long it takes to do something, laughed Dotty. Come on, let's see how long it takes to walk to the dark wood and back again. Everyone agreed, but Mr Marmalade said he had other things to do. 
and Sadsack said he was too puffed out from jumping. I'll stay here, he declared, and keep an eye on the time. When the others had gone, Sadsack kept staring at the shadow, and sure enough, it was moving, ever so slowly, towards the next stone. The time is always now, he thought. And he kept on thinking that wherever the shadow pointed, that there was a new now, and so on, and so on. But then he suddenly started to wonder about all the old nows. Where had they all gone? Were they now in the past? He began to think about the past, and it seemed to stretch back forever. Time must have been here before people, he thought, staring at a strange-looking tree trunk. Suddenly, the tree trunk moved, and so did another. It was an enormous dinosaur. Sadsack was frozen to the spot as a great big head on a long, thin neck bent down towards him. Ah, oh, please don't eat me, begged Sadsack. Eat you? said the dinosaur in surprise. Why should I eat you? I'm a vegetarian. The dinosaur lifted its huge head and bit off a whole branch of a tree. Just then, there was a mighty boom, and a distant volcano started erupting. And before he knew it, sticks and stones started falling on him. Sadsack blinked, and found himself staring at the stick and stones of the homemade sundial again. The shadow had moved quite a lot. I've been in the past, thought Sadsack, and almost immediately began to think about the future and all the new nows. They seemed as countless as the stars. It also seemed perfectly reasonable to Sadsack that in the future, people wouldn't have to walk anywhere. And instead of cars, they'd each have their own flying saucer. As he whizzed around the world, he came face to face with the sun. Good morning, said the sun. Or is it afternoon already? I never can tell. I don't suppose you've got the right time, have you? The time is now, said Sadsack. Ah, thought it was, said the sun. Thanks. What did he say? called the moon. He said the time is now, replied the sun. Oh, right, thanks, said the moon. I wish I could tell the time. Me too, said the sun. Still, never mind, always look on the bright side, eh? Always do, said the moon. Always do. Meanwhile, Sadsack had found what he was looking for, a big cross on the face of the earth. He steered his flying saucer towards it. Cooey, called Dotty. Hey, Sadsack, called back to front. Sadsack turned, and there were all the other raggy dolls in a big flying cup. Sadsack blinked again, and he could see his friends making their way back from the dark wood. How long did we take? said Lucy eagerly. I don't know exactly, said Sadsack. We forgot to mark the shadow when you went, but it's about three stones. Oh well, said Dotty. Who cares? We had a jolly good walk. I hope you weren't bored, Sadsack. Oh no, said Sadsack. I had a very interesting time. Hmm, pity the sundial isn't very accurate, said Back to Front. Maybe we could invent a better way of telling the time. There's no need, said Sadsack. The time is always now. That's true enough, I suppose, said Princess. But how can you tell exactly what time now is? Easy, said Sadsack. Because right now, my tummy tells me it's lunchtime. Good thinking, said Dotty. I'm absolutely famished. And so was everyone else. Raggy dogs, raggy dogs, dogs like you and me. Raggy dogs, raggy dogs, made imperfectly. So if you're not at ease with your knobbly knees and your fingers are all thumbs, stand on your two left feet and join our raggy doll chums. Cause raggy dogs, raggy dogs, are happy just to be. Raggy dogs, raggy dogs, dogs like you and me.